Welcome to another look into the life and message of Elizabeth Elliot, as she called us to live to a higher standard each day, to not be satisfied with only a little religion in life when it's a shallow substitute of what God wants for us. As this series continues in the coming weeks, we'll hear from family, friends, and others who were influenced by Elizabeth's life and message. Today we hear that trusting is the ground for thanksgiving and a look at saying thank you as well as we hear Gateway to Joy 159 and 160. Today we'll be hearing from Bob Lapine, who for many years was the host of Family Life Today, a nationally syndicated radio program. Bob will tell us about the first time he met Elizabeth. Also, we'll have a chance later to hear Elizabeth actually singing and talking about working outside the home and about having too much stuff. Are we thankful for what we have, or is there always more that we're wanting? Well, think about that with us today. First, though, have you ever thought about why we should give thanks? Could it be all wrapped up in that one word, trust? Here's Gateway to Joy 159. Trusting is the ground for thanksgiving. You are loved with an everlasting love. That's what the Bible says. And underneath are the everlasting arms. This is your friend Elizabeth Elliot talking with you again today about gratitude. In Psalm 33, verse 21, we read, Our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Trust is the ground for our thanksgiving. I talked a little bit yesterday about thanking God for the bad things that happen, as Habakkuk did, even when there was no cattle in the stall, no figs on the tree. He said, yet will I rejoice in God my Savior. Now, humanly speaking, it makes no sense to rejoice when things are going badly. But Christians are not always humanly speaking, are they? We're speaking divinely. We are using the words of God on which to found our faith. We stand on a rock that never moves. The world passes away, the grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And so trust is the ground for our thanksgiving, no matter what happens. Let me say that again. Trust is the ground for thanksgiving, no matter what happens. God is in charge. He is still at work, even though it may not look as though he is. And he is the God of deliverance. The Lord is my strength and my song. He is become my salvation. Are you feeling peaceful today? Worried, loaded down with business or just with busyness, dreading an interview, an assignment, a visit to the dentist, a phone call, that pile of ironing or correspondence. My daughter Valerie tells me that the two most difficult things to keep up with are the ironing and the correspondence. Dreading a meeting, perhaps, with a difficult person? Well, let me give you some advice from the Apostle Paul. In chapter 4 of his letter to the Philippians, he writes, I wish you all joy in the Lord. I will say it again, all joy be yours. Isn't that a wonderful expression? All joy be yours. Well, where are we going to get this? Well, he gives us some clues in the 6th and 7th verses. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety, but in everything make your requests known to God in prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Then the peace of God, which is beyond our utmost understanding will keep guard over your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Just those four words, the Lord is near, ought to give us plenty of cause for gratitude. 
and ought to bring peace into our lives and banish the anxieties. He says, have no anxiety. Don't worry about anything at all. But in everything, make your requests known to God in prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Don't leave that out. It's very important that we be thanking the Lord while we're praying. The secret of peace is prayer and thanksgiving. You do this, and God will do the thing that you can't do. Ask what you will and be thankful. And not peace only, but peace which passes all understanding, passes anything that our poor minds can think, will keep these poor, breaking, restless hearts of ours and these weary, worrying minds of ours in Christ Jesus. While I was preparing this talk, Lars, my husband, was preparing our income tax. It is a huge and complicated job because we don't go to an office and work a nine-to-five day. We write books and do radio programs and travel, and my husband sells books, and just a lot of different very complicated things, keeping records of all our travel expenses and that sort of thing. So it is a huge job. And it was so big, in fact, that it took space beyond his own study. So he set up a table in the bedroom, which is just uh, beside my study. My study opens off the bedroom. And he was in there with piles of paper on the table, piles on the chairs, piles on the floor, ledgers, expense records, canceled checks, publisher's statements. And he discovered that one very important paper, the Keogh Retirement Plan, was missing. He had looked everywhere, he thought. And of course, when you've lost something, you've looked everywhere but where it is. And he came in and asked me if I had any idea where it might be and would I be willing to come and help him look for it. Well, the way Lars files things is, shall we say, different from the way I file mine. So I didn't really think that I could be much help if I came in and tried to find the thing with him. So I suggested that maybe we should pray about it first. And so we paused on the way to the attic where the rest of the papers were, and we prayed that the Lord would help us to find it. We went into the attic. We pulled out the first box. We opened the box, and it was the first paper on the top. We said, thank you, Lord. Now, a cynic who might be listening to me is saying, yes, but it was there all the time. It wouldn't have made any difference whether you'd prayed or not, wouldn't it? I think that there are things done here in the world that would not be done unless they were prayed about. Because God has so arranged the universe that our choices and our actions make a difference. And in the mystery of his sovereignty, God knew exactly where that paper was, and he knew that Lars was not going to look for that in that particular place. He looked everywhere else. But when we prayed... It was that box that the Lord brought to mind. When you face what can't be solved immediately, you don't know how you're going to get through the next day or the week. Try thanking God in advance for his help. He is our helper, our refuge, our deliverer. It doesn't say that he will be only. It says he is. So why can't you just thank him right now? My natural tendency is to feel apprehensive if things aren't all clearly spelled out in advance. Last March, Lars and I made a trip to Scotland where I had been invited to speak. And as I look ahead to a long trip like that, I knew that the schedule was not as clearly marked out as I would like it to be. I didn't know which planes we would be taking and who would be driving us where and what the setting of the meetings was going to be. There were phone calls to make and people to see and interviews, and it all looked very complicated, and thinking about it made me tired and made me really sort of dread the trip. And then I remembered the verse, When he putteth forth his sheep, he goeth before. And that reminded me to thank the Lord in advance. 
because God was already making the arrangements. He already knew exactly what he was going to do and how he was going to help us. And so rather than dreading the thing and concentrating on all the things that I didn't like about it, I could thank the Lord in advance that the unknown things were being taken care of, that the unforeseen circumstances were foreseen in the sovereign mind of God. When we came back from that, again, I'm tempted as I'm coming home in the plane to dread the pile of work that will have accumulated in my absence. But then I remembered the verse in Isaiah 50, verse 7. The Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. And I said, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You have promised to help me. My trust in you is the ground for my thanksgiving. You have set my feet on a rock and established my goings. And so I will praise you. I will thank you. I will banish the worries, have no anxiety about anything, and in everything make my requests known to God with thanksgiving. That was Gateway to Joy 159, Trusting is the Ground for Thanksgiving. Later on, we'll be hearing Gateway to Joy 160, saying thank you. First, though, Bob Lapine joins us. For many years, he was the host of Family Life Today, a nationally syndicated radio program. He worked in local radio for many years as well. Well, Bob's going to tell us about the first time he met Elizabeth. I remember clearly the, the first time I met Elizabeth, um, in part because it was a highlight. I was going to have the opportunity to meet someone who was a spiritual hero for me, not only because of uh, what she had lived and modeled for us in um, the story of her life, but also through her writing and her speaking. We were going to interview her on her book, Quest for Love. It included stories and letters, accounts of people whose lives had been impacted by the book, Passion and Purity. I remember thinking to myself, because I'd heard Elizabeth speak so many times, I remember thinking that uh, I needed to be on my best behavior, mind my manners, not be too impertinent. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I kind of felt like she might uh, be like the school teacher who would get out a ruler and wrap my knuckles if I got too carried away with something. And yet it was completely different. As uh, we sat down to do the interview, I remember uh, thinking to myself, uh, that here was somebody who was winsome and engaging and who who liked to laugh and to smile. You know, we didn't hear that often when we listened to Gateway to Joy or we heard Elizabeth speak. But I remember in the interview, she uh, she did an imitation of conversations she would have with teenage girls, and she would adopt the personality of what the teenage girls would sound like. She She said... Uh, she'll talk to teenage girls and they will say, well, and, and she'd use this, well, I'm in a relationship. And Elizabeth would then go back to her own voice and say, well, tell me about the relationship. Is, is this someone you're engaged to or is it a brother in Christ? And then she'd go back to sounding like the teenage girl. Well, it's, it, it's just a relationship. And she smiled and made the point that she would often tell these women, it's one or the other. It's it's either your brother in Christ or the intentions have been declared. And I, I, it was just such a joy to have that conversation with her that day and to find so many things about which we agreed. And that began the ongoing opportunity for interacting and for relating to and, and being with Elizabeth at, uh, at speaking events. And those memories are, are treasured memories for me, even today. That was Bob Lapine. Later on, we'll hear Elizabeth actually singing. And uh, too much stuff. I hear that later on. First, though, saying thank you. 
That's Gateway to Joy 160. This is your friend Elizabeth Elliott talking with you today about a subject that I need probably more than you do. Gratitude. I am very, very, very grateful for so many things, but I know that I'm not grateful enough for everything that comes into my life. And so it's something that I've been thinking about and I wanted to talk to you about, and so we've been talking about this for several days. And I asked the question at the beginning, are you a complainer or a thanker? Gratitude will transform your life. Do you remember the story of the ten lepers whom Jesus healed? They walked away, but one of them turned around and said thank you. And Jesus said to the man, Where are the nine? Were there not ten lepers cleansed? Where are the nine? And perhaps that is a pretty accurate assessment of the percentage of people who are truly grateful. Maybe only about 10%. Well, I want to be in the grateful 10%. Do you? It takes practice for some of us. And I'm one by nature whose tendency is to complain. Oh, well, I could say that's just the way I am. I'm a complainer. I have a critical mind. No, I can't get away with using an excuse like that. A true Christian is grateful. Gratitude is certainly one of the characteristics of the holy men and women of God whose lives I want to emulate. I have another letter today from a listener to this program. She says, I've tried to describe you to some of my friends, and when I get stuck, I just say, the women's libbers would hate Elizabeth Elliot. One friend replied, oh, good, she sounds like my kind of woman. Thanks for that encouragement. My correspondent goes on to say, I'm the eldest. I was the social butterfly type, and I didn't like to learn homemaking skills. Oddly, I still held as my utmost desire to be a wife and mother. That was the only career I ever wanted. But I was bossy, bullheaded, and totally unprepared for the chores of homemaking. I am committed to being home full-time for my children. I am so glad that my mother was home for us five. I have a three-year-old, and we expect our next child in about two months. Being home full-time hasn't been for me all it should have been. I still wanted the same social life and to be as involved at church as I was before children. Well, you can imagine the stress and chaos that resulted. Well, during 1989, God seemed to be calling me to spend more and more time at home and less and less time running around. I like to say it this way. What good is it if I'm ministering to people at church and my friends when I can't properly minister to my own family's needs. If I'm out, quote, saving souls, unquote, and neglecting my children and they go to hell, God will hold me accountable for my children first. I finally heard the call to motherhood and wifery, which has been there all along. I feel such peace. There are people at church who disapprove, but I don't have to answer to them ultimately. I know I'm where God wants me to be. I've said all this to say thank you for your program of Friday, January 5th. Actually, all of that week's programs were wonderfully helpful. Thank you for the encouragement. Sometimes I wonder if I'm cut out for the job, but it doesn't change my commitment. Elizabeth, thank you for your commitment. Thank you for being a sane voice in a chaotic, ungodly world. Well, thank you, Julia. I surely do appreciate that letter. About a hundred years or so ago, H. L. Sidney Lear wrote this, A bright, happy soul, rejoicing in all God's gifts, seeing cause for thankfulness and gladness in everything, counting up mercies rather than trials, looking at the bright side, even of sickness, bereavement, and death, what a very fountain of goodness and love of Christ such a one is. I remember one who, worn with sickness and sleepless nights, answered to the question if nights did not seem interminable, Oh no, I lie still 
and count up my blessings. That's a good piece of advice for those of you who have insomnia. Lie still and count up your blessings. And I love George Herbert's poem, written back in the 17th century, on gratefulness. Thou that hast given so much to me, give one thing more, a grateful heart. See how thy beggar works on thee by art. But thou didst reckon, when at first thy word our hearts and hands did crave, what it would come to, at the worst, to save. Perpetual knockings at thy door, tears sullying thy transparent rooms, gift upon gift, much would have more, and comes. This notwithstanding, thou wentest on, and didst allow us all our noise. Nay, thou hast made a sigh and groan thy joys. Wherefore I cry, and cry again, and in no quiet canst thou be till I a thankful heart obtain of thee. Not thankful when it pleaseth me, as if thy blessings had spare days, but such a heart whose pulse may be thy praise. I want to read that last few lines again. Not thankful when it pleaseth me, as if thy blessings had spare days, but such a heart whose pulse may be thy praise. The praise of God ought to be the pulse of a Christian's life. Don't you think so? Do you wake up in the morning with these words on your lips, May Jesus Christ be praised? That's suggested to us by a hymn, When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries, May Jesus Christ be praised. Alike at work and prayer, to Jesus I repair. May Jesus Christ be praised. Brother Lawrence, that monk of several hundred years ago, who was assigned work in the kitchen, praised the Lord continually among the pots and pans. He found it just as possible to be practicing the presence of God in the kitchen with people demanding this and that and running here and there as he did in private, in his quiet time, in his cell. The practice of the presence of God certainly involves thanksgiving. And you know, a lack of gratitude is really a pretty serious sin. Did you know that it is actually categorized along with idolatry and sexual sin? Look at 1 Corinthians 10. In verse 6, Uh, Paul is reviewing some of the history of Israel, and he says, These things happened as symbols to warn us not to set our desires on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters like some of them. As Scripture has it, the people sat down to feast and rose up to revel. Let us not commit fornication as some of them did, and 23,000 died in one day. Let us not put the power of the Lord to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And then listen to this in verse 10. Do not grumble against God, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. And the word destroyer is capitalized. It's one of the words, one of the names for Satan, the enemy of our souls, If you grumble against God and fail to thank Him, I think that's the work of the destroyer. And of course, He is out to destroy you as well as His enemy, God. The true Christian is thankful for all things. How is it possible to be thankful for all things? Because we trust Him. Trust is the ground of our thanksgiving. Let's not be grumblers, classed along with idolaters and fornicators, but let's be praisers, thankers, whose lives are characterized by a bright, cheerful, sunny spirit. Philippians 4, 6 tells us, be careful for nothing but in everything, 
by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. That was Gateway to Joy 160, saying thank you. Hey, are we thankful or do we have too much stuff? Here's Elizabeth to uh, tell and sing something about that. I had a letter a couple of years ago from Janet Jansen. She said, someone once asked me if I didn't feel that my creativity was being stifled by not working outside the home. I have a college degree and have managed a medical office. At the time, I just said no, but now I've realized how much my creativity would be stifled if I did work outside my home. I remember reading something George MacDonald wrote to the effect that for a creative life, make your will one with that of the Creator. I don't claim to have my will perfectly aligned with that of the Creator's, but I can truthfully say that the more I seek to follow Him and know Him, the more creativity I seem to enjoy. And she goes on to include a little song. The tune is very familiar to all of you, I'm sure. It's Three Blind Mice. But these are Janet Jansen's words. Too much stuff, too much stuff, more than enough, more than enough. It's out of the closets and filling our space. It's growing and spilling all over the place. We're tripping all over a terrible case of too much stuff, too much stuff. More than enough, more than enough. The piles are staring us in the face. They multiply at an alarming pace. And soon we'll be buried without a trace in too much stuff, too much stuff. More than enough, more than enough. It isn't easy to run the race with all of this stuff slowing down the pace. I think that I need some additional grace for too much stuff. And then she's got this one. Dishes, dishes, dirty dishes. I do dishes all day long. Seems I'm always washing dishes, so I sing this little song. Thank you, God, for dirty dishes for our food and family. Help me see each dirty dish as one more blessing given me. Thank you, Janet Jansen. I love it. Well, it looks as though our time together has come to an end. Thanks for uh, letting us come into your home, your office, maybe along with you as you jog, wherever we found you today. And on behalf of the Elizabeth Elliott Foundation, in cooperation with the Bible Broadcasting Network, let me invite you to check out all the resources at elizabethelliot.org. Elizabeth with an S, elizabethelliot.org. For more talks, devotionals, videos, and other resources, that's the place to go. Until next time, may God remind you daily, you're loved with an everlasting love, and underneath are the everlasting arms.